Hello, I'm Steven Spielberg, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the E.T. adventure. But I'm afraid we don't have much time, so I'm going to cut right to the chase. E.T. needs your help. Now, we've just received an urgent message from E.T.'s teacher, Botanicus, calling for E.T. to come home right away. You see, a big problem has developed three million light years away on E.T.'s home world, the Green Planet. E.T.'s friends are in danger because their planet is dying. Remember what E.T.'s friends look like because it's gonna be up to you to help E.T. find them once we get him home, and there's not a moment to lose, because only E.T.'s magic healing touch can save his friends and bring his planet back to health. E.T. must go home, and only you can help him. Ah, E.T. That's right, E.T. So why don't you show these people how we're gonna get you back to the green planet? You and E.T. will be making your three million light year journey on these bikes, but don't worry, you don't have to pedal. But you will need an interplanetary passport. So before you leave with E.T., tell your first name to one of our assistants, and they'll give you your pass. Oh. Sounds like E.T.'s ready to go. So good luck, everyone. And remember, E.T.'s counting on you, and so am I. Oh. It's up to you to save his planet so that he may visit us again.
All right, welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Throckal, and I am one of the researchers here in the Hammond Creation Lab, named after our founder and InGen's first CEO. Here we collect, study, and nurture eggs from all manner of dinosaur species. We think that one of these eggs here will hatch any minute now, and we're quite excited to share that moment with you. But until then, let's do a little rundown of how this place operates. Every dinosaur species has slightly different needs while they're still in their eggs. Some need a warmer climate, some a drier one, some need to be left underwater. Now, I won't spoil the surprise and tell you what's going to hatch here, but these eggs, like many others, need to be kept nice and warm for a time after being laid. That's what this thing is for. It's kind of like an oven that can be set to maintain the perfect temperature for baby dino development. Many eggs need to be constantly warmed in their earliest days before they can survive their native environments. That's not just true of dinosaurs, but of many modern birds too, which are dinosaurs' closest relatives in our modern world. And now you might notice here that there are some pretty sizable cracks forming on this egg. This is because the creature inside of here is a predator, something with a big head that will need to force its way free from the shell. And don't worry, this is dinosaur-proof glass. We only deal with the babies in here, but this barrier would keep you safe even if a triceratops came charging through the lab. Once hatched, each dinosaur receives treatment specific to its species. Some need time to grow before they can be welcomed among others of their kind, for example, and some are pretty much ready to go the moment they pop out of their shells. It all really just depends on... Oh, oh, oh she's coming out! <laughs> Making a bit of a mess with the shells here. Hey, I think she wants to meet you. And there she is. Say hello to the newest addition to Jurassic World. Look at those slender, lightly clawed arms, the curved back, the shape of the head. If you haven't guessed it already, she's a velociraptor. As a pack hunter, she'll need to learn how to communicate and coordinate with other velociraptors to take down prey. But once the team starts working together, they can take down creatures five times their size or even larger. The sharp, hooked claws on her feet let her latch onto fleeing prey and, well, I don't want to get too graphic, but let's just say that Velociraptors take games of tag very seriously. Now this little one will need to be taken to the nursery pretty soon to get her first checkup, so you'll have to excuse us. Our raptor specialist, Mr. Owen Grady, is probably sitting on pins and needles waiting for the new addition to his family. The little one and I hope that you come back to visit soon. Until then, enjoy the rest of the park.
way, my name's Frank. But most people around here just call me Jigs. Because I've had my share of unluck. And before you ask, yeah, I heard about it. But I ain't seen no giant angels. Let's try to keep it that way. Over there. Good timing. We're gonna need help putting up the traps. Joe, how's it look back there? Hold on, I need more light. Oh, great. I hate these flying rats. Vortexes, take cover! Everybody stay 
and happy 4th of July! Hop on board! My name is Dean! Welcome aboard! Now I know that our town's got a little bit of a reputation, but don't you worry about anything because we have come equipped with a TNT launcher! Woo! <laughs> ah, but we won't be needing it. No one's seen a great white around here in 49 years, so we're gonna be fine. We'll be fine. Now let me just check in with base, make sure everything's clear to go. Base, are we clear to go? Uh, this is base. You are clear for departure, MD6. Have a good trip. Excellent. <laughs> Give me a second. Old girl's getting finicky. There, off we go. Wave goodbye to your friends and loved ones, everyone. Now, as I said, my name is Dean, and I'll be your guide for this scenic tour of Amity Island. All right, everybody, welcome to Captain Jake's Amity Boat Tours. We are the best and only scenic boat tour on the island. And we'll be visiting the actual spots where back in 1974, the beast we call Jaws devoured all those poor islanders. Now, the first item of interest over on your port side is the home of our very own chief of police, Martin Brody. After blowing up that monster of a shark, he became a legend in his own time. By the way, in that movie they made about our little shark episode... Hey, 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 it's which, Something's out there. I don't know what, but it's all right. Space, this is Amity 6. Did you copy that transmission just now? Sounded like Gordon on Amity 3. Over. Uh, 10 4, we copied. He can't be too far away. He was headed back in. Okay, we're, we're picking up his distress signal now. Keep an eye out for him. I'll call Chief Brody. Base clear. Copy that. We'll see. What on earth? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, base, this is Amity 6. Amity 3 is sinking by the lighthouse. I repeat, Amity 3 is sinking, and I don't see any sign of the crew or passengers. I don't know what could have done this except... Uh, Amity 6, repeat that. Uh, shark! 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 Oh my... Uh, base, he's under the boat. What do we do? Uh, stay calm, stay calm. Uh, try, try the TNT launcher. Over. Really? You can load it? Uh. Uh, base, this is Amity 6. Tell Chief Brody we're gonna hide in the boathouse until we get help. Uh, we'll be safe in there in the meantime. Uh, everyone okay? We're okay. We're okay. We're gonna be okay. Let's see. Where can we tie up? Hello? Anybody in here? Huh. Did you hear something? Gotta go. Come on, come on, old girl. Come on, we gotta go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hold on. I got this. There. All right. Off we go. Oh, no. Look out. Every six is the chief Brody. I'm on my way. I'll be there in ten minutes. Ten minutes. We're gonna be shark bait in ten minutes! Alright guys, I don't see him, but... Uh, 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 oh, 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 this is, this is bad. Oh, this is very bad. Come on guys, we gotta get away from this gas dock. We gotta go for it. Come on. Here we go, hang on tight. Looks like we made it. Hold tight, everyone. We should be okay. <sighs> yeah, I don't see him anywhere. I think that's the last we'll see of him. <sighs> we're gonna we're gonna try and get off of that old fishing shack and get off one row at a time. Everyone, for now, just stay seated and keep your hands in the boat. Oh, and uh, watch out for that high voltage barge. I think we can. Oh no, not again. Dog, suck! Come on. I think I got it. Does anyone see it? There. Just to be short. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. But we roasted him. <laughs> What a day! 76, what was that? Where the heck are you? 
This is Brody, are you all right? Yeah, Chief, this is Amity 6. Call off the Marines. We are coming home! Whew! Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you all for your incredible bravery today, but, um, we don't need to, we don't need to tell anyone what happened out there, all right? If that fish episode leaks, that'd be it for Captain Jake and a lot of the other businesses around here, so just keep it to yourselves. I mean, after all, we did get him, didn't we? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah we did! Well, on behalf of Captain Jake and Universal Studios, thank you for helping me conquer Jaws. I'll see you next time! Now, before I send you on your journey through time, I have a few things to show you. Here, at the Institute for Future Technology, my crowning achievement, the new experimental eight-passenger time travel vehicle. It's this baby that will send you across the space-time continuum one day into the future. <laughs> What's that, Heine? You see some... Oh! Great Scott, it seems we have an intruder alert. All sectors report in immediately. Quadrant 1, check in. Quadrant 1, locked and secured, Doc. Level 2, check in. Level 2, locked and secured, Doc. Section 3, check in. Section 3, locked and secured, Doc. Zone 4, check in. Zone 4, do you copy? I'm a butthead! Jump and Jigglebox! It's Biff! I'm sorry, folks. We've got problems! There's only one troublemaker who can throw a monkey wrench in the works like this! Biff Tannen! Juvenile delinquent! Graduated Hill Valley High School, class of 1955! 1955? There's something very strange going on around here. At any rate, stay alert. If Tannen gets his hands on some of the equipment around here at the Institute, it could mean the end of the very universe as we know it. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your visit. We are currently experiencing minor security difficulties. We apologize for the inconvenience. Now, if my assumption is correct, Biff must have entered the complex diabolically disguised as one of you. It's only a matter of time before we catch that juvenile delinquent, so don't worry. I need. Watch the monitors. Chow time. 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 Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Huh? What are you looking at, butthead? Wait a second. You're the sucker's Doc Brown conned with time travel experiment. You know, some of Doc Brown's guinea pigs never make it back. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't volunteer. I just hope the Doc's making it worth your while. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe I can make it worth your while. That is, if you help me find Doc Brown's time machine. 
What's the matter? Chicken? There's no way Doc Brown's gonna stop me now. Excuse me. I gotta finish my repair work. <laughs> Even though we have a little security problem on our hands, we must prepare you for temporal displacement. That's time travel to you. Perhaps this demonstration will suffice. <laughs> Figuring out the space-time continuum is tricky business. Believe me, I know. And that's why I developed this. My ultimate scientific achievement. The new eight-passenger time vehicle. It's faster, more energy efficient. And it's a convertible. I figure if you know what the weather is going to be like in the future, why not just time travel to the sunny days? But it's only for those who take time travel very seriously. And that means you. But remember, this is all top secret. With Talon on the loose, we can't afford to take any chances. I assure you this is hardly business as usual here at the Institute. A mere fluke. Our security system is virtually impenetrable. It'll take a lot more than a hoverboarding hood to pull the plug on this operation. Oh! Darn, darn, darn. Now, please stand by for an important message from the Institute's Chief Inventive Officer, Dr. Emmett Brown. Now that you're here, time travel volunteers, I can give you your pre-flight briefing. There's a lot you'll need to know if you're successfully cross the space-time continuum. We'll have to hurry, though. With Bith still on the loose, anything could happen. Hello? Hello? Hello, Dr. Brown! <laughs> Bip, how in blazes did you get in here? Why don't you ask these bozos? Doc, one of our time travel teams was conducting an experiment back in 1955. He must have stowed away! Hey, I'm not one to pass up a free ride. Tannen, you should be here in the present! We've got to get you back to 1955, or we could create a major paradox! Oh, don't worry, Doc. I'll go back. And in style. But first, I'm gonna take a little joyride. No! Biff! Love to stay in chat, Doc. I just ain't got the time. What am I saying? I got all the time I want! <laughs> Unlock these gates, Talon! Hasta la bye-bye! Oh! Oh! <laughs> He's got the time travel vehicle. This is terrible. He's going to alter time. History as we know it will be completely obliterated. If he's not stopped, we could... Wait a second. Ah! Why didn't I think of this before? My newest invention, the eight-passenger time vehicle. That's it. I'll just hop in it. Great Scott! What am I thinking? I'm trapped like I'm right in my own office. There's no way I can get into that time machine. Hold on a minute. I can get to it. But my time travel volunteers, you and you and you, you're my only hope. The eight passenger time vehicle is just beyond that door where you're standing. I can pilot from my remote control from here, but I'm going to need you to help me navigate. You've got to catch Biff. The fate of the entire universe rests in your hands. I almost forgot. In order to successfully bring Biff back to our time period, it is necessary to accelerate up to 88 miles per hour and bump him. That's right, bump him. The impact of two traveling time vehicles will create a time vortex, sucking both vehicles and time travelers back to their original point of departure. There's no telling where or when Biff may be leading us, so be prepared for anything. Good luck, time travelers. Get in. Watch your step. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get ready. Don't worry about a thing. You're in good hands. Oops. I still haven't worked all the bugs out of this thing. But no matter. We're a mission of universal proportions. Doc, Biff has passed through the space-time continuum, but we've got no way of knowing where he is. You mean when he is. 
and we do have a way of knowing when he is. The eight-passenger time vehicle is equipped with a sub-ether time tracking scanner, which will allow us to track Biff to his precise location at the precise moment in whatever time period he may have traveled to. Doc, all pre-launch system checks are complete. That's our cue. Hang on to your hats. Don't forget, when you see Biff in the time vehicle, accelerate to 88 miles per hour and bump it! Accelerating now to 55 miles per hour! 65, 75, 85, 88 miles per hour! Bill Belly in the year 2015! And there's Biff! Let's get him! Oh, oh God damn! Okay, time traveler, now's our chance! Oh yeah, that's what you think! evil hill valley that we're about to enter could be a pretty rough place. Hello? Anybody home? Big huh? Scott! A dinosaur! Hello? It's a Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex! Look out! Right this way, Gramps. Come on! Come on, Gramps! Right this way! Now sick him! <laughs> Big Scott! Look out! Calm down, big fella. Calm down, easy boy. Easy boy. Hey, 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 I'm hit. I'm hit. I know, Biff. What in blazes? What's those jaws? Ah, look out! We've been swallowed! Hang on! Invention is a success! Go forth, time travelers, and remember, the future is what you make it!
Aha! 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 Hmm! My name is Mary, and I shall be your guide today through our tour of Universal Studios and our grand history. Of course, I could not do this job alone, so let me introduce my partner in crime, my other half, and most importantly, our driver, George. Be nice to him, considering our lives are in his hands. Now, just a reminder to stay inside the tram at all times during the tour. That includes your hands, feet, head, tentacles, or any other appendages you might have with you. The last thing we need is for someone to get caught on something or fall out of the car and create a real-world trolley problem. Contrived ethical dilemmas aside, how about we get this show on the road? After you, George! As we go along this tour, you will become familiar with the main features of our lovely park and learn some fun and interesting parts of our history. You never know when that sort of knowledge will come in handy. The first destination on our tour is Timeline Drive. Here you can see posters from some of our greatest hits dating all the way back to our 1931 rendition of Dracula. If you're ever in need of something to watch on a Friday night, maybe give one of these a try. Some of them may be a bit old, but they're still beautiful works of art. Get some friends together and maybe try the original version of The Mummy or Creature of the Black Lagoon. You'll get a kick out of them. The films Universal Studios is better known for in our day and age start in the later half of the 1900s. Many of you have probably heard of the classic thriller Jaws from 1975 or one of my favorites, the 1982 movie E.T. If you didn't know, E.T. stands for extraterrestrial, meaning something that came to us from beyond our planet Earth. Over on our right, these large structures are the studio's production buildings. This is where the magic happens, where everyone comes together to make the movies that we love. It takes a huge number of people to make a film, though, especially today when there are so many special effects. Of course, we need actors, but we also need writers to make the script, directors to make sure that the actors and everyone else make the best artistic choices, and producers to keep everyone on schedule. Of course, none of that would be possible without our carpenters, gaffers, lighting crew, camera people, CGI teams, makeup artists, electricians, fire technicians. Honestly, if you can think of a job, chances are someone with that job has worked on at least one movie with us here, or at least for a little while. You're now entering the New York section. We're only here for a moment, you can see the Museum of Antiquities. There, you'll find our Revenge of the Mummy ride, where you can help defeat an ancient evil alongside the brave and dashing Rick O'Connell. Don't worry, we'll be back to see the rest of New York later. Now I welcome you to the Golden Gate City, San Francisco. This hilly town is famous for its tram system and infamous for its earthquakes. Most earthquakes are caused when two tectonic plates grind against each other and suddenly shift. The entire planet is covered in these plates and the places where they meet are called fault lines. Wanted you know it, most of California, San Francisco included, lies on a fault line, so you can expect a lot of earthquakes in this area. Speaking of which, I want to show you a little demonstration on how we make earthquakes in the movies. This set was built in the 1980s with the tracks dug right into the floor. When they were done with that movie, though, the guys in charge thought, hmm, you know, earthquakes are pretty common in movies, so let's just keep this one. Now all they need to do is redecorate the scene whenever they want a different earthquake location. Let's see it in action. Here we go.
history and culture everywhere, provided you can overlook the Yorkshire Terrier-sized rats and is a massive hub of the arts. The famous street Broadway is home to some of the best and most popular theater performances in the world, but you can find beautiful, rich work all over town. The city is like an incubator for the arts, a place where some of our country's greatest works are born, including a bunch of movies. Not everything is filmed in California after all. Passing on our left, we see the building where the ride based on Steven Spielberg's famous film E.T. runs. If you haven't yet, you should give it a whirl. Now that's something to phone home about. Now this is what we call Hollywood Land, and up here is our Monster Cafe, where you can see all of the classic monsters from our films, like Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, the Wolfman, and the creature from the Black Lagoon. And don't worry, they don't bite. Much. We're passing by the Universal Globe now. Right now it's missing something, though. I heard that Woody Woodpecker asked you to help find the missing letters and restore the globe. I hope to see those letters back soon. The park just isn't the same without them all spinning around. Something smells swampy. I heard a green ochre lives over there. just take a moment to appreciate the beautiful sounds of nature. Of course, that's all just part of the movie magic. From here, though, we'll be taking a turn into the darker side of the park. We now enter the realm of the Lord of the Jungle. Join me as we pay tribute to Kong, Kong, Kong. Everyone, Kong, Kong, Kong. Really? No one? I'm just... Okay, well, let's hope he isn't insulted by your lack of reverence. Otherwise, he might throw this tram all the way to New York. And I don't mean the movies that we just drove through on the way here. By the way, if you haven't yet and are feeling particularly brave, I highly recommend stopping by the ride we have here, Reign of Kong. You can join Kate and her expedition team as they delve into the caverns and other lost places to uncover the secrets of Skull Island. This is what we call Old Mexico, and it's just the kind of place we'd take a camera crew if they were looking to film something set out in the Old Wild West. Now this area has something of a weird localized weather system, so I apologize for the rain as we... Hey, uh, George, why'd you stop the tram? You can get going again, right? No, I'm not asking the passengers to get out and push. Not in the rain. That's just... Our last tour group 
like I'm about to keel over and pass out, but well, maybe everyone should take a quick shower once we're done with the tour, just in case. Ah, this is my favorite part of the park. Welcome to Amity Island, where the sun is warm and the swimming is prime. If you're in the mood for a beach day, this is the place to... The beaches were closed. Huh, I wonder why. Those 
But the scientist is the true monster of the story, at least in the original book, because of his arrogance, thinking he had power over life and death, and because he was unable to love his own creation. And with that, we come to the end of our time together. I hope that you enjoyed yourselves. If you did, my name is Mary, and my partner is George. If you didn't, my name is Sue, and the driver was just a figment of your imagination. Enjoy the rest of your day and come back anytime to ride Universal Studios' world-famous studio tour! Bye-bye! Aha! 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 Hmm! Hmm! Action! Aha! Action! Aha! Action! Hmm! Action! Action! Aha! Cut, cut! Aha! Ah, hmm, hmm! Aha! Action! Ah! Action! Hmm! Action! Ah! Action! Action! Hmm! Action! Ah! Action! Hmm! Action! Hmm! Action! Ah! Action! Hmm! Aha!
Your arms and legs inside the... Prepare to burst your soul! 